The biggest problem with smoking a Texas-style brisket on a Traeger is A, it's hard to get that nice black bark because the Traeger doesn't produce a lot of smoke, and B, it's hard to get that smoky flavor because the Traeger doesn't produce a lot of smoke. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve those problems and make a Texas-style brisket that any Texan would be proud of. So grab your favorite Texas beer, I've got a cold Lone Star here, and let's get to it. <sighs> Lone Star. Use the Schwartz Lone Star. Spaceballs for you guys that kind of dating myself with that reference. So the first thing you're going to want to do is trim your brisket. I'm not going to walk you through it in this video because I already have a video right here that you can watch that'll walk you through it step by step. The second step is you're going to want to apply your rub. And Texas style brisket, at least in central Texas, is all about salt and pepper. S and P, baby. So all you need is some kosher salt and grab some pepper. The larger the pepper flakes, the better. Mix them together 50-50, apply them over your brisket, and then your brisket is ready to go. So preheat your Traeger to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Stick to a hickory or cherry or oak or a competition blend or something like that. Try to stay away from mesquite because mesquite will impart a pretty strong taste to your brisket. You're going to place your brisket so that the fat side is down. All the heat on the Traeger is coming from the bottom, so you want to protect the brisket with the fat side down and protect it a little bit from that heat. Now to solve the problem of the Traeger not imparting a lot of smoke and smoke flavor, I use an amazing pellet smoker. You can also use a pellet tube smoker, and this just imparts way more smoke flavor and helps with the bark formation throughout the cook. So I light my amazing pellet smoker with my torch, and then I just let that burn inside the Traeger next to the brisket. It'll burn for up to eight hours, so it'll provide plenty of smoke to firm up that bark, make it nice and dark, and give it that smoky flavor. After about four hours, check on your brisket and the bark should be set by this point and it should look pretty dry on the outside. With all the convection and air going through the Traeger, briskets tend to dry out pretty quickly, which is actually a good thing because that helps set up the bark and firm it up. And if you have too much moisture, that can inhibit bark formation. But after the four hour mark where the bark really tacks on and firms up on the brisket, that's when you want to start spritzing about every hour with some beef stock or some apple cider vinegar or some apple juice or just plain water. It doesn't really matter too much. I find that the beef stock adds a little bit more salt and a little bit more darkness to the outside of the brisket, so that's what I use. Once we get to the eight hour mark, this is usually where the brisket starts to get to the color where I like it, between eight and 10 hours. It usually takes a little bit longer on the Traeger or any pellet smoker for a brisket to get that nice dark bark color. Usually it hits that color a lot earlier on let's say an offset smoker which produces a lot more smoke. So your brisket might be around 165 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to around 180 degrees Fahrenheit before it hits that perfect color. So you can see that at the 10 hour mark here it has hit a really nice color and I know that if I wrap that now in foil, it's not going to dissolve all that bark because that bark is really firmed and set up. Now, this is a really important point, guys. If you're smoking with a select brisket, then I always recommend you wrap at exactly 165 degrees, no matter what the color of the brisket looks like or what the bark looks like. Because if you take a select brisket all the way up to 180 degrees, you're gonna dry it out. A select brisket needs all the help it can get, and sometimes you have to sacrifice that bark formation to get a nice juicy brisket. But with a choicer prime brisket, take it all the way up to 170, 180, it's not gonna matter. So once it hits that perfect color that you want, take it out, Wrap it tightly in foil and add about half a cup of beef consomme. This is going to help hydrate the brisket. It's gonna add some nice flavor to it. And then put it back on the Traeger, bump the temperature up to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that it's in that foil and it has that liquid in it, it can take a lot more temperature without getting dry. So bump up the temperature to 275, continue to cook it for two to three hours and then start probing it. The brisket is done when you can probe it and it feels like room temperature butter at the thickest part of the flat right underneath the point. So until it feels like that, do not take it out, do not remove it. If you're getting any kind of resistance at all in that thick part of the flat right under the point, then just keep on going and check it every 30 minutes until it is done. And after it probes tender, you always wanna rest it for at least an hour. I like to rest it for two hours. And for this brisket, I want to try out my Edge of Belgravia bread cutting knife. I use a bread cutting knife that's a lot longer for cutting my briskets normally, 
but I just got this from Edge of Belgravia and it's super sharp, so I wanna test it out. And I think it is long enough to cut this brisket perfectly. So what I usually like to do, if you've watched my videos before, is I like to do what's called the glory cut and just cut right between the point and the flat. I did a landmark cut right here, so I know that I need to make my slices right here and that will be perfectly against the grain. So I'm gonna make a cut right about here right down the middle of the point in the flat. It's slicing in really nice instantly. <laughs> I'm gonna stop here for a second because I know this brisket is perfect already just by cutting into it a couple inches because there's no resistance. It's super, super smooth to cut through. This knife is also very sharp, but I just know by the feel of it. So we're gonna pull away from it here. We'll take a look at what we have. Look at that. This is, I call this the brisket waterfall because all of that moisture and that fat is just seeping out through the seam in between the point and the flat. This is crazy. There is a ton of moisture coming out. I'm gonna try to not squeeze it too much, but that is insane. Wow, that is so good. Let's put this upside down because that's gonna prevent the oxidization. And I'll take a slice of this guy. All right, let's take a look at this. Nice smoke ring. We got nice bark formation on the outside. This is really excellent bark formation, actually. It's really tacked on there, and I can tell this is gonna taste good. A lot of moisture retention because we got a high quality brisket. You can see on the lower part of the muscle here, there's a ton of moisture retention. It's an insane amount of moisture retention. A little bit drier on the flat up here, uh, obviously because it has less fat but I'm gonna give this a taste now. So I'll just separate that. We can do the bend test. Look at that, super floppy, just like bends right over your finger, pulls apart, a little bit of resistance, not too much though, perfectly cooked. Mmm. Oh, that bark, guys. The bark is so good. It's worth it to keep going on the Traeger a little bit farther than you might be comfortable with to get that excellent bark formation because this is amazing. Now I'm gonna try out the point here. Got a bit of the point muscle. <laughs> oh man, that's like a thousand times better than the flat. So much flavor, it's just packed with fat and salt and bark and it's just awesome. I love the point muscle, but I also, like the flat because it's a lot leaner. It's sometimes a lot drier, but it just has a really nice consistency. It's got a really good beefy flavor and it has a lot of bark on it. Mmm, super good guys. All right, I'll catch you in the next video.